Hello, valued viewers. I hope you're all doing very well. And just a gentle reminder that the Super Thanks button is on. It is located on the taskbar near the like button. Simply contribute $20 or more toward the channel's effort and get a video of your choice topic done as the next available project. Simply make the contribution and go to the comment section and describe your topic that you would like to have done. And I do it just as soon as I possibly can. Now on to the video. Okay, real quick, uh, I have something on my mind here uh, to get out with you all. Uh, I've gotten a lot of nice comments uh, thanking me for not using AI at all in my videos. And I certainly try not to put AI content in every now and then. I might gaff and throw a picture in that was AI done and I don't catch it or something dumb like that. Because uh, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed when it comes to catching AI stuff. Uh, but nonetheless, I try very hard not to put AI content into my work. And, um, and I'll leave that you know, there as far as that goes. But I also wanted to mention that these AI channels are outperforming my uh, my own by quite a bit. Uh, two to three uh, views uh, to my one. And you guys, uh, even if it's a topic that I'm, that I'm posting that you are familiar with, which most of you are, simply click on, uh, click on my uh, title, let it play through, listen to a Sunny and Share uh, song or whatever it is you want to listen to while that plays through, and uh, hit the uh, like button and certainly subscribe, do the comments, you know all that rugamarole that uh, helps the uh, channel out. Uh, it really is going to help mine out, especially when it comes to competing against these AI channels who aren't necessarily doing the work uh, to go into these videos the way that I am. So I would certainly appreciate it, and let's get on to today's video. Okay, thank you. The T1 Trust is more than just a preservation effort. It is a bold movement to honor our rich railroad heritage while pushing the boundaries for what is possible. With the passion of dedicated volunteers, the ingenuity of skilled engineers, and the generosity of supporters from around the globe, we are bringing the Pennsylvania Railroad T1 number 5550 to life. This stunning locomotive, a masterpiece of Art Deco design paired with cutting-edge 20th century engineering, is set to become the 53rd T1 class engine ever built. Featuring its iconic 4444 wheel arrangement, the 5550 promises to captivate the imagination of rail enthusiasts and rekindle the magic of mainline steam travel. Please donate at Pennsylvania Railroad T1 Steam Locomotive Trust.org. Okay, so for those uh, who are new or fairly new to steam locomotives, uh, we first have to identify uh, the type of locomotive that the Pennsylvania Railroad uh, T1 was. It was a 4444 4, 4 steam duplex uh, drived uh, locomotive. And it was also the final steam locomotive design that the Pennsylvania Railroad put through the rails. In what was the late 1930s, the Baldwin Locomotive Works in Pennsylvania was looking for a partnership to utilize a design for an experimental, non-articulated duplex 4444 locomotive. One very unique aspect of the design was that each four-wheel drivers would have a pair of cylinders powering them. Ralph Johnson at Baldwin believed that this design would improve efficiency to the point of rivaling diesel locomotives. One thought of advantage of to using a rigid design, duplex for arrangements such as this, was that it saved quite a bit on overall weight compared to articulated locomotives. Also, it was thought that having four smaller cylinders with slower piston speeds decreased the overall wear and tear compared to two larger, harder working cylinders found on locomotives such as a 484. Starting in 1938, the Pennsylvania Railroad had been experimenting with poppet valves in an effort to improve efficiency and increase power compared to the typical piston spool valve. In a standard wool shirts valve gear, a piston spool valve was mounted in a valve chest above the double acting cylinder. The spool valve slid back and forth allowing steam to enter one side of the double acting cylinder while simultaneously operating the other side to exhaust the previous steam charge. The steam flowed from the center of the valve chest in front of the cylinder, pushing the piston back to the rear of the cylinder. The valve then slid rearward to direct steam in the rear part of the cylinder and allow the front part of the cylinder to exhaust. Steam entering the rear part of the cylinder pushed the piston forward, returning it to the original position. The efficiency of the design was limited since the admission and exhaust were both controlled by the single piston spool valve. The design and integration of these poppet valves was a key aspect of the expectations and performance for the 4444T1 duplex locomotive. Baldwin teaming up with the Pennsylvania Railroad on experimental locomotive designs seemed like a natural fit because it had just finished on the collaboration in creating the S1 locomotive, which was finished in January of 1939. 
The S1 was an experimental rigid frame duplex locomotive with a 6446 wheel arrangement. The S1 was designed to haul a 1200 ton passenger train at 100 miles an hour. The very long S1 was Pennsylvania Railroad's experimental trial with a duplex locomotive, and the company was interested in Baldwin's new design. On June 26, 1940, the Pennsylvania Railroad ordered two prototypes of Baldwin's engine, but specified that it needed to use its poppet valves that were the second prototype would be fitted with a booster engine on its trailing truck. The Pennsylvania Railroad designated the prototype engines as the T1 class and gave them engine numbers 6110 and 60, 6111, and incidentally, the T1 prototypes were ordered before the S1 had entered regular service. The exterior of the T1 was styled by industrial designer Raymond Lowy. Cladding encased the locomotive and tapered to a wedge at the front of the engine. Casings that concealed the top of the driving wheels covered the sides of the engine. The locomotive was finished in a dark Brunswick green, or dark green enamel, with gold accents and lettering. Engine number 6110 was completed in April of 1942, with 6111 following in May. The T1 prototypes underwent a series of tests, one of which measured the engine's machine efficiency at 93%, and another indicating more than 6,000 horsepower for all speeds above 55 miles an hour. After successfully passing the test, the Pennsylvania Railroad pressed the engines into service, but only on a limited basis. The engines had no trouble averaging more than 100 miles an hour or portions of their route between Harrisburg and Chicago. By April of 1944, number 6110 had accumulated 120,000 miles, but 6111 had traveled less. Number 6110 could produce 4,100 drawbar horsepower at 100 miles an hour and outperform a 5,400 horsepower four-unit diesel at all speeds above 26 miles an hour. However, that was just performance and did not consider maintenance or crew cost. The Pennsylvania Railroad was sufficiently impressed by the T1's performance that they ordered 50 examples in February of 1945. Production was split evenly between Baldwin and Pennsylvania Railroad's Juniata locomotive shops in Altoona. Engine number assignments were 5500 to 5524 for Altoona and 5525 to 5549 for Baldwin. The production version of the T1 had a flatter prow and shorter casings that exposed drive wheels. As production continued, the casing was trimmed back farther and the locomotive's nose was made more utilitarian with stairs replacing the hand and foot grips. The suspension was revised on the production T1s in an attempt to reduce the engine's proclivity for wheel slip. The production T1 weighed an additional 5,000 pounds. Production T1s were not fitted with a booster engine which cut 15 inches off the main engine's length, reducing it to 66 feet 11 and a half inches. However, the tender gained 15 inches, making it 55 feet and a half inches long and leaving the T1's overall length unchanged. Altoona was responsible for manufacturing all 50 tenders. The tender was modified as a Class 180P84, carrying an additional 3,200 pounds of coal and 300 gallons reduction of water. The tender's weight increased by 9,500 pounds to 442,500 pounds. Combined with a heavier engine, the production T1's total weight was 944,700 pounds. Okay, so I have a comment about the so-called slipping problem with the T1 locomotives. And basically, it is, it's as simple as this. When you have a locomotive that's rated for over 6,000 horsepower and it also has a drawbar horsepower between 4,000 and 6,000 horsepower, depending on what the speed is, and then it's also just going on a roughly 65,000 tractive effort, to me, that seems like the engineering crew isn't driving the locomotive correctly. In other words, you're applying way too much power on startups and whatnot. And that's a training issue. So to me, yeah, the locomotive is probably quirky when it comes to startups and all that with a wheel slippage. But it's because the locomotive drive team doesn't know how to you know, start up this locomotive correctly uh, based on the total power that this uh, design has. Okay, so another note about the wheel slippage is this, though, too. It uh, it caused uh, some maintenance issues, especially with the poppet valves, because for all intents and purposes, with these inexperienced locomotive crews driving the locomotive, in my opinion, incorrectly along the line at, at different speeds, uh, all the different wheel slippage that they encountered caused kind of like a herky-jerky effect, which would damage the poppet valves, and so that would... Uh, 
render the uh, locomotive uh, inactive and you know of course in the shops for uh, repair so the wheel slippage isn't just a slippage it's also uh, residual damage uh, being caused by this particular problem whether it be the uh, locomotive crews or something going on with the locomotive itself like again i believe it was more so the crews than the uh, design issue with the t1 the Pennsylvania Railroad had a reputation for blazing its own path, setting the standard different from the rest of the railroad community. The same trailblazing spirit exists with a contemporary T1 Trust, which is currently working to build a new T1 from the rails up. Starting in 2014 by casting a keystone-shaped number plate bearing the new locomotive's identity, which is number 5550, it began fabricating the 51st T1, not counting the prototypes, that the group had conducted extensive research including gathering almost a complete set of original blueprints in an effort to create an authentic rendition more than half a century after the originals were scrapped at the latest t1 number 5550 is due to be completed by 2030 with a near reproduction of number 5500 as it appeared in 1947 there will be some technological differences between the original and the new edition First T1s burned coal. Number 5550 will run on oil. The originals had riveted boilers and cast frames and cylinders. The new T1 will have a welded boiler, frame, and cylinders. The steam distribution system and poppet valves will be the later Franklin B2 type as opposed to the less successful Type A used originally. These differences aside, the T1 Trust is working to faithfully build a new yet original locomotive and Jason Johnson, the Trust General Manager, talked about the technical differences. If the Pennsylvania Railroad is building steam locomotives today, this is how they do it. You would not rivet. A rivet gives you another point of failure and a place for a leak to occur. When all of our welds are done, they are radiographed and they are 100% perfect welds every single time. The group had also researched metallurgy, metallurgy used by the Pensy in cast parts and replicated the formulas for use in new castings. They are working to keep the weight of the number 5550 within 2% of the original T1s. Speaking of the new frame, which is currently in production, Johnson says the center of gravity is the exact same location on both frames, and both frames are within a thousandth uh, pounds of each other. As designed, the T1s had a number of qualities that brought about their early demise, with the class being scrapped between 1953 and 1956. Lori's streamlined shroud caused plenty of access headaches for maintenance crews. Although the decoration could be and was trimmed back, this was a minor detrimental reason. The wheel slip was eventually solved, however. This was a situation of too little too late. The average engineer did not acquire the finesse to operate a T1, and that's what I was mentioning earlier. Wheel slippage is bad enough at low speeds, but a slip at 80 miles an hour was a scary proposition. The pop-up valve breakage posed a considerable concern despite re-engineering efforts. The real death knell for the T1 was in 1948 announced by, by Martin Clement, Pennsylvania Railroad's president. By May of this year, we expect all of our important east-west through passenger trains will be diesel-powered west of Harrisburg. So basically here, the death of the T1 was really attributed to diesel uh, motive power, just like just about any other steam locomotive in the industry. By weight, the T1 Trust is more than half finished with a number 5550, where I would estimate at this point is 60 to 70 percent. When done, the plan is to make a run at the world speed record for steam locomotives established by the London and Northeastern Railway A4 Mallard on July 3rd of 1938. The 126 mile an hour record was set during a downgrade test run on Stoke Bank south of Grantham, England at mile post 90 and a quarter. New world record or not, the T1 number 5550 would be a sight to see. The styling of the Lowy riding aboard an updated version of Baldwin and Franklin technology spirited along by the contemporary version of the Pennsylvania Railroad's Tooch Path courtesy of the T1 Trust. You know, concerning the speed record, we'll never know for sure what exactly the real speed record is. They always say the Mallard is on a slight downgrade, which that's not really confirmable one way or another and the pennsylvania railroads atlantic number 7022 they claim that their locomotive went faster than the mallard which no one's been able to basically confirm or deny on that one as well so who really knows what the speed record actually is or how it was done all we know is that the mallard is attributed to that record at 126 miles an hour and that's the record that is to be beaten um 
the, whether we agree what the record actually is or not. And it's certainly my opinion that any American built 484 and above, um, or a T1 or, or an S1 for that matter, all of them have the ability to break 126 mile an hour, and I think they could break it rather easily. And that'll wrap up my portion of the video for today. Uh, please head over to the T1 Project's website and contribute whatever resource that you can toward their effort. I am so proud of that group. The, when they started in 2014, I had sincere doubts whether or not they were actually going to make it to the finish line. Because simply stated, most projects of this sort usually don't make it. And it's usually because of finance uh, issues. So please uh, assist their, their efforts because they're building a locomotive that every single steam locomotive enthusiast wants to see back on the rails. Forget the steam rail. Record. It's the locomotive that they're bringing back. In my opinion, the popularity of this uh, steam locomotive will surpass that of, of Big Boy coming back, you know, and all the uh, other legacy steam locomotives in service today. So please head over to their website and contribute whatever you can toward their effort so we can see this gorgeous uh, steam duplex locomotive back on the rails. Thank you once again.